So let's say that you want to get connected to lots of educators uh, on Mastodon. I, I mean, I think that's part of the fun is is connecting to people that are interested in the same things that you are. But uh, they're going to end up in just about every instance that's that's available out there. Um, so how do you follow all those people? Well, early on uh, when I got here to, to Mastodon and, and different instances, I decided to create um, a, a Google form that would capture uh, edututors, and I got the name edututor from somebody. I'm not sure who. It was, like I said, it was. It's been a few weeks, and I've slept a few times since then. But edututor hashtag was a really uh, interesting place to uh, take advantage of. So I decided to uh, create a Google form, and it's tinyurl.com forward slash join edututors and uh, you can see here that it's essentially a Google form and has some links to tips and tutorials and I do have a uh, a list of tutorials that, that you can take advantage of um, that get you started one that people really seem to like is the uh, posting animated gifs and then tips for using Mastodon but as you can see, if you scroll down, it's going to ask you for a few questions. Ask you a few questions. Now, the last time I looked, there were 152 people, um, and you can see there's a few people logged in already. And if I scroll down, uh, there are a lot more. <laughs> so there's a lot of people that are here, and uh, we've jumped from 150 something people. Uh, down to uh, about 190. Um, I am creating a import list, and uh, I see we can see. Uh, so I'm at 159 here. So I'm just going to come back over and start with 160. And all I'm going to do is just drag down, copy that, and just drop it here. So that way, people will have an updated CSV list. So, just like I downloaded um, a list before, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to go to File and Download a CSV file. And I'm going to save that. Just EduTutors is fine. And save that. Now, if you're wondering, oh wow, well, how do I do that? Um, I have a tutorial uh, on my website. It's um, well, it's it's going to be one of these links, but this sort of walks you through the process that you can take. And you see that when you get people into to import them, there's some simple instructions that you can follow and take advantage of. And so here's the CSV file, etc. So if I look were to look on my desktop, I actually see. Uh, the CSV file and walks you through just the process and what it looks like. Now I'm going to come back over here to Kodo and again jump back over into my preferences and uh, what I want to do is actually import and this is so that I don't have to follow uh, you know a hundred to almost 200 people one by one. Now I can just sort of add them to my list and if there are people that already are in my list, it's just going to merge that list with the new list with my old list. So I'm going to choose File and find that EduTutors. There it is. I'm going to click Upload, and it says your data was successfully uploaded. And so what Mastodon is going to do, especially at Kodo, is compare the two lists and say, oh these people that he just added aren't in his list so we're going to make sure that they um, get added in so that means that right now there's over you know several hundred people that are saying hey Miguel's got a Kodo account and he's followed me now what I need to follow him back I hope <laughs> so that's pretty much sort of a quick overview of, of getting uh, becoming a part of the uh, the list of edu tutors right now we're at 194 and uh, let's talk a little bit about what are the apps that you can use to connect let me close a few windows here because it 
it can be a little overwhelming to have that many uh, windows. So I'm just going to come to mgulen.org, do a quick search, and, and search on um, animated GIFs. So here's a blog entry on posting animated GIFs on Mastodon. One of the things that sort of drives people crazy is that they will uh, come to Mastodon and they uh, want to be able to post animated GIFs and post images, but uh, and they want to do that on their on their smartphone or their tablet. But unfortunately, the Mastodon client app, which is the official app, doesn't do that. So they're working on improving it, but right now it doesn't do that. So instead of getting the Mastodon app on your phone or your tablet, what you need to do is uh, get on iOS, that's your iPhone or your, or your iPad, you'll want to get MetaText or Toot. I have both of these on my phone and uh, I just switch back and forth for variety, but uh, probably MetaText is your best bet right now. I think it's, a, it's the best free app and works great. So definitely check it out. If you're on Android, uh, you can get Tusky, which is free, or Fedalab, uh, which costs $2.49. So as you can see here, MetaText or Tusky are free apps. Toot and Fedalab are, um, cost money. Uh, but either way, it's up to you what you want to do. You probably want to start out with free, and then if you decide you need some of the other features, you can do that. Uh, Fedalab is my preferred app on Android, but Tusky works just fine. So if you don't want to spend any money, definitely uh, go that way. Now, I would also encourage you to get the Gboard keyboard. Uh, that's uh, something that's available for both iOS and Android, and it will let you sort of... Um, paste uh, GIFs in. So once you, you get it, you can tap on the little globe that appears on your on your smartphone uh, when you're in the middle of a, a toot or a post on Mastodon, and then you would be able to paste in a graphic. Isn't that cool? It's, it's a lot of fun. Now, for those of you that are on desktop, Windows, Mac, or GNU Linux computers, there are a lot of options, uh, but one that I like is uh, Sengi, and you can actually download this software and load it on your uh, computer. I'm just going to click on Sengi because you can see down here all the different icons that tell you, hey, this works on Windows, works on Apple, it works on uh, Ubuntu Linux or Linux. Um, but you can also choose to launch Sengi in your um, browser and you can see I, I have it all automatically configured uh, for my H Commons account uh, but now I have all of these different um, posts that I've just popped in this is my home and it's going to just keep updating news edtech authors and these are actually lists that I have set up and folks that's just a really important tip when you're uh, working on on this it's there's there's not a computer trying to send you information about what people have posted so it's very easy to perhaps miss things that that go by if you're not connected or involved so I would encourage you to bookmark stuff um, so that way you can find it again when I see something I like I immediately hit that bookmark button but there's also uh, lists that you can create. So lists are composed of people that you've decided to follow. So if you click on EduTutors, or I click on EduTutors, I will get a list of all the different people that I'm following on EduTutors. So you can see Ollie Lewis is asking, where will all the education Twitter folk? And I'm just going to vote and say Mastodon. Um, but there are lots of other places uh, things. So here's a ed tech list that I started. I added a few people and um, I've got there's Sandy Kendall and uh, lots of, of great uh, stuff. So really, really interesting um, content that gets shared. So 
Well, that's that's pretty much a quick wrap for uh, Mastodon. I'm sure I've left something out. Um, maybe the only other thing would be actually how to post. Um, as you can see here, there's just different ways to do that uh, in the web browser. So uh, we have this here, and now I can choose to attach or add an image. I'm just going to quickly go here and see if I can find a, a picture. Okay. And unfortunately, I think a picture is going to take a little bit of time to load because um, Mastodon is being slammed right now at the time I recorded this with all the Twitter migrations. But uh, I would definitely, after adding a picture, add uh, closed captioning. Um, I can also choose the visibility. And let me just explain a little bit about the visibility. Uh, mentioned people only is sort of like a direct, sort of like a direct message. It's not private, so remember that you really shouldn't ever put any private information or confidential information online. Uh, but mentioned people means that it's sort of like direct to the other person. Um, and nobody else can see it except maybe uh, the server administrator, um, which you know they're not out there looking. But um, why you, you don't don't put anything confidential or pro super private there? Uh, you can also choose to post something that's for followers only, and uh, that's um, anybody who's following you, uh, and then. If you want to do unlisted, you could say unlisted, or uh, which is visible for all, but opted out of discovery features. So, so it, this is great to use when you're re replying to somebody. If I wanted to come back and say, hey, Sandy, I loved your post about vocabulary mapping. Thank you for sharing that article. Then I would probably post it as unlisted, because I'd, people who would be reading mine as public, reading that post, wouldn't know that I was talking to Sandy. They'd have to click through and figure it out. So it's really not necessary for me to post it as public. But if I'm posting something like a general announcement, hey I'm thinking about switching over to Kodo, um, I would definitely post it as public for all so that everybody would know um, and be able to access it. Yeah you can see that image is not coming in because it's it's running a little slow here. Um, there's also um, a link here I can choose I can allow the post to reach other instances or I can p just post it for local only my instance um, so usually federated is sufficient and then if I want to I can choose to change the language so let me see if I can find Espanol here um, let me reload that okay and let me, I'm going to go ahead and again, I'm just going to type in Espanol. And I predict that the way this would work is that it would change the language um, to Espanol. So let's, let's just for fun, uh, see what happens. I'm going to say at mgulen at kodo.org um, and hit post. And oh, let me make it so that mentioned people only. So that means, um, see I get a post on Mastodon are not end-to-end -end encrypted, don't share any sensitive information. So I'm going to post this to myself over here on Kodo. I'm going to hit post and now I'm going to switch back over here to Kodo and see if I got that. I'm going to look at my notifications and specific mentions. And you can see here that I have that post, H Common Social. It says, "Howdy, I'm considering switching." So uh, that was pretty much instantaneous. Even though these are two different instances of Mastodon, messages go right across um, pretty quickly. So that's really the lesson here: is that you don't have to choose um, that special Mastodon instance that that everybody's going to, like Mastodon Social. Instead, choose one that fits your interests, that, uh, you like the rules and you're you're happy to, to be there. Uh, and then you're able to, to do that. 
Well, I, th I think this sort of concludes my uh, uh, walkthrough of Mastodon. Thanks for watching these three really long videos.